Underrated. A word easily thrown around, but certainly right to use when it comes to some creatures in Ark. Passed by many players, whether it be their beginner tame looks, frustration to tame or otherwise. So what are the most underrated out there? You're right kids, it's Ras Clark and welcome to another top 10 as voted by you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. So in at number 10 is the poop blinding horse head alcoholic known as the Chalice Ethereum. Indeed, uniquely passively tamed with its staple, beer. And I wonder why you'd brew it for this tame. A great berry farmer initially, it comes into its own with its ranged ability. A rock throw mixed with a bit of dirt and fecal matter impairs its opponent's vision, poisoning them in the process. And with pumped melee, you've got a hard hitting infinite catapult that, unlike the golem, can be combined with a platform saddle as well as set to a turret mode. In at number 9 is the Dimetrodon, one of the more frustrating to tame owe to a very severe torpor drain, being unridden and since kibble changes over the years less desired. So why tame a Dimetrodon? One reason, it is the living incubator. Not only a great source for insulation from those freezing cold nights, but when pumped with melee and especially multiple tamed, will allow you to incubate and hatch any dino egg you need, right up to the aircon thirsty drake eggs. A best source for those not in a position to acquire either aircons or the incubator, allowing you to hatch from a very early level. In at number 8 is the Caprosuchus. By far one of the most overlooked in its field, with most bagging a Sarko or Baryonyx, the Capro certainly shouldn't be ignored due to a few hidden features. Besides being a land and sea mount, of which the latter is pretty speedy within, its pounce ability really pulls it into a league of its own, able to dismount players off almost every creature, including yes even those dreaded manners, and passively drain stamina of any creature it encounters, able to stall even a Giga, and of course grab small creatures along the way. Above all else, it makes for a fantastic cave explorer as voted by you in that top 10 poll. As such, is worth a thought, especially for PvP. In at 7th place is the lovable Rue. Tamed with rare mushrooms, it comes in as an essential companion for any breeder especially. Because as well as being a black belt in berry gathering, when combined with weight, a fantastic travel mount owed to its non-surprising jump, used in fact for a sneaky advantage in the broodmother arena, it boasts a pouch, able to carry other survivors in, but more importantly, baby creatures. Meaning right up until they become too big to carry, they'll consume less food and receive doubled imprints, easing that raising grind by a league in some scenarios. In at number 6 is the Thorny Dragon. Arguably the most overlooked on this list, seeming to offer very little, the Thorny Dragon does have a few tricks up its sleeve. Besides being a fantastic wood gatherer, in fact the very best on Scorched Earth, it's one of the rare creatures out there that can be used like a smithy, crafting anything one can. In desperate times can also act as your very first turret, able to drain stamina with its spike attack, equally inflicting torpor which when leveled and mutated can become a reasonable knockout companion. In at number 5 is the Iguanodon. Getting into the perhaps better known now, we kick off with a great beginner's choice. The Iguanodon not only boasts a fantastic berry gathering ability, it's the only herbivore that will change berries to seeds when required. A great addition of course for light pets, as well as gathering toxin from spore inducing mushrooms. It brings a very awesome feature with it too, infinite stamina, that when combined with some movement speed can make for your best travel mount when needing to get from A to B without a pause. In at number 4 is the Equus. By far one of the easiest to tame, and usually is a first for most, the minigame carrot feeding tame isn't just a pretty horse for speed, without the need for a saddle, lasso making and trapping to pull creatures, or even its mini chem bench utility when saddled up. The Equus boasts a very, very mean kick, so much so that a leveled one is able to knock out the very largest of creatures, offering you a torpor dealing taming machine. In at number 3 is the Moss Chops. 
Without question, my favourite on the list, running an in-depth video on its own, the Moss Chops is the best harvester around, at least until you've bagged yourself a Therizino. But even then, requiring no saddle, able to autonomously harvest, when set to a resource of choice and whistled at a dead creature can harvest incredible amounts, pumped with melee being a perfect choice for mutton and poly especially. Just don't expect it to hang around in the sign of danger. In at number 2, and surprising to see so high, being at least a must for older players of the game. The Toad is a fantastic necessity for a certain resource. Being a great choice for land cover, leaping great distances and nimble enough in the sea, dealing a fair amount of torpor to anything needed, it comes into its own against insects. When taken to bug infested swamp caves especially, you'll find it to be the cementing pace provider you've always dreamed of, stacking up slots in no time, as well as offering some quick levels and no fear from leeches having no aggro from them. Again, surprising to see this so high, being well known enough in my opinion. But before we get to number one, let's just have a quick special mention to the creatures that didn't just make the cut. So here it is in at number one, the Dire Bear. And again, surprising to see being both such an easy early tame and wisely known to older players for being a hard hitting machine. Perhaps overshadowed by the Therizino to some, the Dire Bear boasts incredible power. Insane movement speeds built up to fantastic gathering, doubling as a bee dodging honey taker with none of the aggro, but does offer something many overlook. Insulation. It is the only mountable creature that can keep you warm in those very cold temperatures, which fittingly will make this overlooked feature a necessity when Fiorda finally arrives to official and you brave the coldest location ever seen in Ark. Thanks all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, comment below. Let me know what more top 10s would you like to see in the future. My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, uh, peace out.